So let's begin by looking at the following diagram of a fully charged parallel plate capacitor. So this plate of our capacitor is positive and this plate is negative. Now in the previous lecture we were able to calculate the total quantity of electric charge that can be stored on our parallel plate capacitor. We said it's given by taking the product of our capacitance given by C and the square of our voltage between our two plates and dividing that product product by a factor of 2. Now this gives us a relationship between our quantity of electric energy stored and the capacitance as well as the voltage. Is there a relationship between the magnitude of electric field between these two plates and the quantity of electric energy that can be stored on our parallel plate capacitor? So to explore this question, we have to recall the following two equations. So recall that if our electric field is assumed to be uniform, which it is in this case between our two plates, then the voltage between our two plates is equal to the product of the electric field, which is constant, and d our distance between our two plates. Now let's also recall that the capacitance is equal to the product of epsilon naught, the permittivity of free space, multiplied by the area, the surface area of either one of these plates, divided by the distance between our two plates. Now, we essentially want to represent our quantity of electric energy in terms of the electric field. So that basically means we begin with the following equation and we replace our capacitance with this ratio and the voltage with this product. So now we have one half multiplied by epsilon naught multiplied by A divided by D multiplied by the square of the product E multiplied by D. So let's distribute this ex exponent so we have E squared multiplied by D squared and this simply becomes epsilon naught multiplied by A divided by 2D. Now notice D appears on the bottom and on top we can cancel one of these out and we get the following result. Now the surface area of either one of these plates given by A multiplied by the distance between our two plates gives us the volume of this section separating our two plates. So we see that the quantity of electric energy stored on our capacitor, on our parallel plate capacitor, is equal to epsilon naught multiplied by the volume between our two plates. Now this is not the voltage, this is the volume, multiplied by the electric field between our two plates squared divided by two. So we see that the electric energy stored on the capacitor is directly proportional to the square of the electric field. So that basically means if we double the electric field between our two plates, that means we quadruple the quantity of electric charge or electric uh, energy that can be stored within our parallel plate. Now let's define something known as energy density. So the energy density is simply the quantity of electric energy per unit volume. So we divide this by volume and this quantity by the volume, this volume will cancel and we're left with epsilon naught multiplied by E squared divided by 2 is equal to lowercase u which stands for our energy density. So, just like our electric energy, our energy density also depends on the square of our electric field. Now, let's look at the following example in which we're essentially going to use this equation to calculate what the quantity of energy is that is stored within our capacitor. So, how much energy is stored by the electric field between two parallel plates, 10 centimeters by 12 centimeters, separated by a distance of 0.005 meters? 
So assume that the charges on the plates are equal in quantity but opposite in sign. And let's let's suppose that U is equal to 600 microcoulombs. So let's begin by drawing our diagram. So we essentially have two parallel plates as shown. One of these has a positive charge, one of these has a negative charge. And a voltage difference exists and so that means there is an electric field in this area and it's assumed to be constant. Now the distance between them is 5 millimeters and the area of either one of these plates is given by 0.1 meters multiplied by 0.12 meters. That's the area. So we essentially want to use this equation. Recall that Q is equal to C multiplied by V. So C is equal to Q divided by V. If we plug that in for our C in this equation, we get the following result. We see that our electric energy that is stored within our electric field between our parallel plate capacitors is equal to Q squared divided by 2C where Q is the quantity of charge that is stored on either one of these plates. So, we are given the Q, so if we calculate the capacitance using this equation, we can find what the quantity of energy is using one of our equations, this equation in particular. So, the capacitance is equal to the product of the permittivity of free space, the area of one of these plates, divided by the distance between our two plates. So we plug in our quantities and we see the capacitance of this particular plate or this particular capacitor is equal to 2.12 times 10 to the negative 11 farads. So finally, we use this equation. So the electric energy stored within our electric field is equal to the Q squared, this quantity 600 multiplied by 10 to negative 6 coulomb squared divided by 2 multiplied by this quantity gives us about 8.5 times 10 to the 3 joules of energy is stored within our electric field found between our two parallel plates within our capacitor.